Hi, this is April Perry and Jonathan Baylor with another episode of The Same Show. We're excited to record today. How are you doing, Jonathan? I'm, I'm doing awesome, April. We were, we were like, okay, April's going to kick off the show. And I was like, okay, we're going to do three, two, one. And it was just dead silent for like 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I get it. Who's doing the three, two, one? <laughs> so I, think, I don't even remember who did it, but I'm happy to be here. What are we talking about today, April? Okay, today we're talking about the siren song of weight loss. And I am really excited to interview you here and basically pick your brain and and help me to finally stop listening to it. And here's how I'll define the siren song. I actually have a little picture I'm holding up in front of me that is something that arrived on my doorstep with one of those little coupon books that they pass out. And it says, you are going to lose 20 to 45 pounds in 40 days, guaranteed. No hunger, no exercise, no surgery, no shots, no hormones, no kidding call this number which is and we're going to review our system and it's going to be fantastic for you so i see something like this and i'm just thinking okay first of all there's a huge market for something like this right everyone is looking for this simple solution to lose a whole lot of weight in very little time and this is a song that's being played all the time it's coming in every kind of media it's it's all over the place. And I just want to know how we can finally stop even listening to it or stop even looking at it. Because even, even myself, who's been sane for a year, and I know that this is like ridiculous, I'm wondering, well, what are they doing? What are they promising? What's going on here? Is this something people should try? So just help us just get rid of this, this desire to even listen to any of this nonsense, as you say. Yeah, it's like we have this, We and it, I, I, it's a good thing, we have this innate, at least some level of trust in people. So if we hear something where it's like, you will lose 45 pounds in seven days, our brain is smart enough to say, okay, probably not going to lose 45 pounds in seven days, but because people won't just lie, maybe I could lose like seven pounds in seven days. So yeah, I mean, it's true, because it's like, it's called the anchoring effect, right? So if there was a quick study done, and I'm actually going to show, so here's the ad for folks that are watching the video. I'm not going to show the full ad because yeah, I don't want to good. actually drive traffic to the don't call them. site. But yeah, but it looks something like that. I'm sure you've all yeah. seen seen it before. And uh, so just quick anchoring anecdote. There was a study done where folks asked people, hey, did uh, Gandhi die when he was 176? And everyone was like, no, of course he didn't die. What are you talking about? He couldn't have died when he was 176. But then they asked the people, what age do you think he actually died at? the people so there's a group of people who were asked did he die at 176 first and then there was a group of people that were just asked how old was gandhi when he died across the board people who were first asked if he died at 176 estimated that he uh died at a older age than people mm -hmm. who were just asked did he die because okay. your brain sort of gets anchored to that so you see these ads and you're like oh definitely can't lose 45 pounds in seven days that's not possible but you're like I must be able to lose something in seven days. <laughs> well, you think, wouldn't it be illegal for them to go out and make some claim like this that they couldn't substantiate? And so you just start wondering, is there some easy fix that I don't know about? I guess that's the silly question, but as I dive into my psychology, not that I actually was gonna call that phone number, but that's the question. Is there something I don't know about that is out there that can make something like this happen? I love that phrasing because with that phrasing, is, it, is there some something, some technique, some trick, some supplement, some pill that I don't know about that other people know about? Okay, so here's a, a mental tool that will help with that. Okay. The day, if this day ever comes, that there is something, which if you just do it and take it, you'll lose 45 pounds in seven days. You and everyone you know will hear about it within a week. Because if anything okay. works that well, it's not going to be kept a secret, right? It's not, it's not a secret that if you have diabetes, you should take insulin. It's not like, oh, it's a right. crazy secret, right? If something works that well, right? Like taking an inhaler, if you have asthma, works really well. Okay. And there's no incentive for any business to keep their really effective approach a secret. That doesn't, right. that doesn't make any sense at all. They want... The mm -hmm. most people know, I mean, think about, think about things that have worked well for a lot of people. For example, the Adkins diet. We're not here to talk about the pluses or minuses of the Adkins diet. There's certainly a lot of science supporting it, but the Adkins diet isn't, a, isn't some secret, right? A lot yeah. of people have a lot of success on ketogenic diets 
Mm -hmm. And you've heard, there's a reason you've heard about it. There's a reason it's not a secret. The reason it's not yeah. a secret is because it works. So the first thing is like, is there some magic secret that I don't know about? The answer is no. We okay. wouldn't have, <laughs> we wouldn't have 70% of the population be overweight mm -hmm. if there was an easy way yeah. to not be overweight. So what are these people doing? What would you guess? What are, what would you expect on the other side of this? Yeah, so the second, the, the second key thing here, so first, well, okay, I'm going to kind of contradict myself. So there, there, is a, there is a secret easy way to lose weight. Um, there's a couple of them, right? So one, just by way of ridiculous example, is to cut off a leg. Like okay. if you cut off one of your legs, you'll lose like 45 pounds instantly. And you're like, Jonathan, that's stupid. What are you talking about? Okay, here's another way that you can lose weight really fast. Ask a wrestler or ask any competitive athlete that needs to make weight. Mm -hmm. And you'll start hearing stories about amphetamines and cocaine and sweating and eating uh, c eating cotton balls and eating Kleenex and all kinds of just crazy, unhealthy nonsense. Mm -hmm. There are ways to lose a lot of weight really, really fast. Okay. They're probably worse for your long-term health than right. cutting off okay. your leg. Okay. That makes right? sense. Yes, that's helpful. And you don't need to call these numbers to find out that <laughs> there's just something that's not helpful because there is no way from... I mean, this is where I'm asking you, understanding how the body works and understanding the science so well, there is no way that you can drop that much weight that quickly without bringing some harm to your body long term. Yeah, the is only, correct? and this, exactly, yes, and this people might be surprised to hear this, but again, the calorie myth isn't that calories are a myth, it's that the idea of counting calories should be the focus of health, that's the myth. Okay. At the end of the day, if you want to burn, so you can lose water weight, you can burn off muscle tissue. That's not what we're after. We're after fat loss. To burn off fat, your body has to physically burn fat. The only way it can do that is by needing to burn off more fat, right? It's not just going to spontaneously burn off fat. It's only going to burn fat if it needs fat. And why would your body burn fat? The only reason your body would burn fat is because it needs energy. So, the only way that this is going to happen, the only thing that can make your body burn fat is the need to get more energy. So if if something can make you burn 10,000 calories per day, you'll burn 10,000 calories per day, but your body isn't supposed to just get cranked up. I mean, imagine just flooring your gas pedal in your car. I mean, that's your heart will explode. And that happened, right? In the 70s and 80s, doctors were prescribing amphetamines as weight loss pills that are now illegal because it made, or not even um, in the 90s. So there was something called, this was back when I was in the bodybuilding world, it was called the ECA stack, ephedra, caffeine, and aspirin. So if you stacked a f meaning to take together ephedra, caffeine, and aspirin, you would jack up your metabolism so high that you would just melt off fat. Unfortunately, you'd have a heart attack and now it's illegal, but it it worked in quotations, right? That's the, it's, yeah. it worked in quotations. The quotes are what's really important. Right, okay. So I appreciate how you're framing this. And I think that it is really helpful for us to be able to see that Yes, there are ways that we can, you know, we can burn fat. But one of the things that I used to be confused about and just wanted to clarify here in case anyone else gets confused too, is when you said the only way to get your body to burn fat is if your body needs that fat for energy. So that's where I used to think it was important for me to starve myself, right? Because I, that's just logically to me. I thought, okay, if my body is going to burn off this extra fat, that means that I can't be eating. So and help us understand. No, that. that's that's the key point because if you ask the typical person on the street, you know, what's the if you stop if you eat less, then you have to burn more fat because you're eating less. And the the, the underlying logic there it makes sense on the surface, which is say you need two thousand calories per day. So let's say right now when you're fully fed, your body's going to burn two thousand calories per day. So as mm -hmm. the as the story that we've been told goes. You cut 500 calories per day, taking it down to 1,500. There's 3,500 yeah. calories in a pound of fat. So over the course of seven days, you will burn 3,500 3, calories. So you will burn off a pound of fat, right? That's the story you've been told. Is that correct? Right. And I'm good at math. And so I used to calculate and I was really good at the math, but then it just didn't add up. <laughs> it didn't add up. So here's, and the fundamental problem with that is that it has an assumption, which is false. And the assumption is that your body 
is, is it works like an equation, right? That you can just subtract 500 calories from one side of the calorie equation. So if you just subtract 500 calories from the calories inside, that the calories outside doesn't change. That's 100% unequivocally not disputed by anyone who knows anything about human biology, false. If you eat 500 fewer calories, you will burn fewer calories. Bottom line, you will be cold, you will be tired, you will be hungry, your brain will be foggy. Why do those things happen? because your body is running slower. So the idea that just dropping 500 calories out of your diet creates a 500 calorie deficit is false. Your base metabolic rate will drop. And in addition to that, there's a second assumption, which is false, which is those 500 calories, if they, if they existed, which they don't because your body's slowing down, that we're gonna get them by burning fat. That's sadly also untrue. Your body, if it's in a caloric shortage state, what's it want? More calories. What burns a lot of calories? Muscle tissue. So what's it gonna burn off first? Muscle tissue. So then maybe after you've slowed your body down radically, which is the last thing you wanna do if you wanna burn body fat and burnt off a bunch of calorie hungry muscle tissue, which is the second thing you definitely don't wanna do if you wanna burn off body fat, then it might burn some fat. But now if you ever stop starving yourself, You've got a body that's slower and that has less calorie hungry muscle tissue on it. So guess what happens? You gain it all back and then more. Yeah. yeah. And that's so, and that, that actually ties back into the a point that I wanted to make sure we hit on, which is weight loss is, is actually not the goal. It's weight, it's fat loss and maintenance. Let me give you a quick example. Jay Jacobs, good friend, uh, biggest loser season 11 finalist speaking with him. And he said, Jonathan, I've lost a hundred pounds or more six times in my life. Oh my goodness. Right. How, and everyone who's listening to this, have you ever lost weight? Of course, you've probably lost weight many times. So the issue isn't, can we lose weight? The real issue is how do we lose fat and keep it off while enjoying our lives? So how do you lose weight? You're right, April, you just create a caloric deficit. And you can do that by starving yourself. You absolutely can do that by starving yourself. You lock someone up at a concentration camp, they're not gonna gain weight. They're gonna, right. they're gonna lose weight, right? But the question isn't how do we lose weight in the short term? The question is how do we heal our body so mm. that it keeps us at a healthy weight, enjoyably long-term? Does that make sense? Yes, and that's why I have loved listening to you and reading your book and, and remembering this information because this is my, my reality now, a year after going sane, is that I don't weigh myself anymore at all. I don't even remember the last time I stepped on the scale. Actually, my husband needed to weigh me for something. I forget what it was, for some activity or some uh, some form we were filling out for insurance or something like that. And he said, get on the scale. I'm like, no, I don't do scale <laughs> anymore. <laughs> he said, just get on the scale. I'm like, but I just drink a ton of water. You know, I'm giving all these, <laughs> these excuses why I can't get on the scale. So even though I had a ton of water, even though I was fully clothed, even though it was like middle of the day and had a breakfast, you know, all this stuff that I would never have done before stepping on a scale. I got on the scale and I was eight pounds lighter than I had been when I first started going sane. And I was amazed because I hadn't even looked at the scale. So number one, you've totally freed me from the scale. But number two, it's been so interesting where like now even it's just kind of random where I'll be surprised at how my body is changing in ways that are positive, where I'm, you know, even, I don't know, just getting ready for bed or just waking up in the morning and putting my hands on my stomach. And I'm like, wait, like I'm feeling different. Like everything just feels different. I feel my body burning fat and it has not been fast. It has been a little at a time, a little more at a time. You know, I've been doing more eccentric exercises. I've been, you know, upping the weights every week that I'm lifting and or lowering. And I've been feeling like, oh my goodness, I feel these changes. But I've had to fix in my head that desire to have it happen overnight and to have it happen so quick and that's i mean it's still this i mean I don't, I don't feel like it's an it's much of an issue for me right now but still when you see an infomercial or you see some advertisement for how you can get some amazing result in five days i don't know what it is there's just some part of the brain some reward center something like that that thinks oh that looks so exciting that's so wonderful but i have to 
remind myself and reset and explain again, this is not the way it works. It's about long-term health, long-term wellness. You know the right way to do it. Do not get distracted. And I have to say that to myself, you know, whenever that temptation comes to look for the quick fix. And I just, I want to be able to turn people to you and to your voice and to your message and replay this episode over and over and over again. Anytime you get one of those advertisements on your door, because this is the key to never being hungry, to never having to worry about what you're eating or how much you're eating. And then eventually to be able to lose that fat, to be healed from your body image issues and to be able to feel like you can live the rest of your life being healthy. Was that a testimonial or what, Jonathan? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, and I love that you concluded with the rest of your life because I don't, I don't want to confuse here, but I want to, I'm, I'm always about trying to, you know, how do these things keep showing up on TV? How do they keep coming up in magazines? Like if it was just total nonsense, wouldn't the FDA go after these people? Well, again, yeah. two things, the FDA does go after quite a few of these people. Okay. The second thing is you can, you can lose seven pounds in seven days. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you how to do it, but that's when the issue isn't weight loss, right? <laughs> like you, you've probably done that. You have lost seven pounds in seven yeah. days and you're still looking for an actual solution. So the thing that mm -hmm. I would just encourage is it's not necessary. Like when you see those ads, like it might be true that yeah. doing, taking these amphetamines and working out 90 minutes per day, every single day and eating 1200 calories, you will, you will lose a lot of weight really fast. But if you ever stop, ever, you will be worse off than if you never did it. That's the key distinction, right? So if you go on The Biggest Loser and you stay on that show and you live on the ranch for the rest of your life, you will maintain the starvation-based weight loss that you achieved on that show. But from experience and working with Biggest Loser alumni, if you can't live your life on the Biggest Loser Ranch, and if you can't live your life on amphetamines, and you can't live your life on 1,200 calories and 90 minutes of exercise per day, then those aren't the approaches that'll work for you. We've got to find a different approach that will work for you because that which works, you have to keep doing it, right? If you're on the freeway yeah. and you want to go 60 miles an hour, you're only going to stay at 60 miles an hour till you keep your foot, as long as you keep your foot on the gas pedal. Yeah. So whatever you do, to reach that point of nutritional serenity or a healthy, happy body image, if what got you there isn't something you can maintain enjoyably, that's that's the sticking point, right? That's yes. the key distinction. And that makes so much sense. And that's why I'm such a big fan, Jonathan. <laughs> like, <laughs> honestly, I feel like, and, on, and my husband has been such a support to me because when I started going sane, when I changed my diet, there were a few times when I just said, oh, this is so hard. You know, I'm, I, I'm relearning so many things. I'm unlearning so many things. And my husband was the one who just said, April, this is the first thing you've ever done in all our, you know, 16 years of being married at that time that I've seen you do that I know you can sustain. And he could tell that I was I wasn't hungry. I wasn't cranky. I wasn't stressed out about, you know, exercise. I was finally feeling like I could be a normal, happy, healthy person. And it's it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing to see what a change this, this makes. And you're right. I have to be able to do this for the rest of my life. And the question is, can I eat sanely? Can I live this life I'm living right now for the rest of my life? Absolutely, yes. Like, no problem. I go to bed full and happy every single night. I wake up and I'm excited for breakfast. I'm eating throughout the day. I love the food I'm eating. My kids are, and my family, we're all eating healthy together. It's pretty awesome. Well, thank you, April. And I, I want to, uh, I want to, uh, you, I, as I have inspired you, you have inspired me. So if you don't mind, I want to do, I love your, your, your patented next actions. Yes. So, so can I, can I offer a next action for folks? Yes. And then do I get to close the show? Yes, absolutely. Okay. We're going to flip, <laughs> we're going to roll, roll, roll reverse here. Okay. All right. So my, my recommended next action for folks. I'm trying to think because I have a philosophy here and I'm trying to make it quick. Okay. Um, the next action is that when you, if possible, when next time you see one of these things, um, ex if you can force yourself to laugh, like put a smile on your face and laugh because that will change your psychology instantly. So when you look at it, smile and try to just force a fake laugh. 
because that's going to put your head in the right space. And then say to yourself, like, even if this is true, could I do it for the rest of my life? Like that just anytime you see any of these. Great so like question. this, don't don't question whether or not it works. Question, can whatever this is telling me to do, this extreme workout program, these pills, this whatever, can I do it for the rest of my life? If the answer to that question is yes, give it a shot. If the answer to that question is no, then you can continue to smile and say, well, it didn't pass the test and, and set it down. I love that next action. That is brilliant. And that's something that I'm going to make sure I do. And I teach my children to do every single day. So thank you for joining us today for the same show. We are hopeful that when you see these siren songs of weight loss that appear online, on your doorstep, in the media, that you will remember to ask that question, can I do this rest of my life? So thank you so much for being with us and remember to stay sane.